We're back at Atlanta Motorsports Park, this time with the Hyundai Kona N, the full bore N quote SUV. And generally when manufacturers give their SUVs the sporty treatment, they lower the car to bring its center of gravity down, but not here. This Kona rides higher than any other Kona. So let's take this thing for a rip around the track and see how the new ride height affects the performance. All right, ready, here, here we go. out of the new Elantra N. So we've got a pretty good flavor for what this thing is gonna be like. So let's dial it up into N mode and give it a rip. This being the first and only SUV to bear the N brand, Hyundai is hoping this will be a big seller since apparently everybody wants a sports car performance with a big trunk. <coughs> Elantra N. <coughs> now I'm gonna again sound a little bit like a broken record because under the hood is the same, two liter turbocharged four cylinder that makes 276 horsepower and 289 pound feet of torque. The only difference here is this Kona does not come with the manual transmission. It comes with the eight speed wet DCT. That's very, very good. And we'll get to that in a second. But that means that every Kona N gets NGS or N grain shift, the overboost function where if you push this little red button here on the steering wheel, you get an extra 10 horsepower for up to 20 seconds. NGS is an overboost function that bumps horsepower up 10 to 286 for 20 seconds. Since this is a fleeting adjustment, it almost acts as a DRS in Formula One. So it's almost a gimmick, but it's also very fun. I mean, even without NGS, this thing has plenty of punch. The, the power is apparent on this thing. Your peak torque comes in at 1500 RPM and it stays all the way up until basically the red line just under 7,000 RPM. And when that torque starts to fall down a little bit around 6,000 RPM, your horsepower number, it's still there. This thing has plenty of power. Gearbox is good. In a corner, power on. It's quick. But as we've mentioned a million times here, power isn't everything. Now, I know I kind of said in the Elantra video that generally for this type of car, I'd prefer to have a manual transmission just helps you feel a little bit more connected, a little bit more engaged with the car from a driving perspective. But there's absolutely, you know, no negative feelings about this eight speed DCT. It's quick, it's crisp, it's confident. The programming is good if you leave it in auto. And it's quick when you have your manual shifters with your paddle and you get, you get good cracks and pops on downshift and on liftoff. The cracks on downshift, the sharp and aggressive upshifts, and when you lift off the throttle, it makes all sorts of noises. So power is good, gearbox is good, but how does that power get down to the road? And just like the Elantra N and the Veloster N, you've got front wheel drive. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe it's wrong wheel drive for some people, but you have Hyundai's ELSD on the front axle managing your torque split. I never feel like I'm wasting power, wasting torque. I'm never hurting for traction. I'm never burning up the inside wheel because the torque vectoring on this differential, it's great. Sure, it's a little weird to not have all wheel drive, but all wheel drive adds weight and weight is the enemy of any sports car. And the fact that this is already a bigger, heavier and taller SUV body it needs to do all it can to keep the weight down and feel as much like a performance vehicle as possible. And then there's steering. And this is a make or break for a car like this. Like you have to have some engagement, some directness. Like the steering has to bring something more than accuracy. And it, it has great accuracy on this thing and it'll, it'll heft up depending on what mode you're in. But it's the, it's the communication that I'm getting from the front tires. I know exactly what they're doing. I know if I can put a little bit of turn into, into them while I'm braking. I know if I can give it a little bit more throttle while, I'm, uh, while they're loaded up through a corner. They talk to me, I know what they're doing, and I can feel all of that through the steering wheel. It's a very, very good steering rack. The last thing then is the chassis and suspension. This is where the magic wand needs to come out if this Kona N is expected to deliver the same performance as the Elantra or the Veloster siblings. 
and it's good news on both things. Not quite as good as the Elantra, but it's good news. Uh, you have a very rigid chassis here. You're lacking the, the strut tower brace in the rear like you would get in the Elantra, but this is the SUV, so you don't want to sacrifice that rear storage area, which makes complete and total sense. It is a little less torsi torsionally rigid because of it, but it's fine. The problem that I run into a little bit here is the ride, even dialed back into comfort mode here, like I have it, it's just a bit stiff. It's a bit stiffer than I think I would like it to be. With the wheels and the brakes and all of the, the tire packages and everything, they've jacked the height up on this thing. Interestingly enough, it's, it's, it rides higher than a normal Kona, uh, which means the center of gravity is a bit higher. And the fact that this is an SUV, you sit up higher, you've got sheet metal going up higher, you're carrying more weight up there, means your center of gravity is higher. So in a corner, that center of gravity is going to pull you to the side, which is, of course, what body roll is. Uh, so what they've done, or what they've had to do to counteract that, is stiffen up the dampers. And sure, you have adaptive dampers, and all the way up into Sport, or Sport Plus, or Track, or whatever it is, it's very stiff, and it's very at home on the track. We just got off of the track. But in comfort mode, I would just like it to be a, a touch softer. But with all that said, it's still a fabulous car to drive on the street and on the track, but let's slow things down and step outside. All right, the Kona N, the brand new Kona N. This thing really starts at $34,200, and you get a lot of car for that little bit of money. And the, the simple fact is you can only get it in one trim, and it only comes with the dual-clutch transmission. So the only option that you can spec is what color paint you want. There's four color options, and two of them you have to pay for, and those two are $400. So all the way topped out, it's thirty-four six. Which is wild. This is under $35,000 and you get so much car here. Now, personally, I like the white, which I believe is one of the ones that you have to pay for. Um, but I would absolutely go with this one. Interestingly enough, though, while I'm talking about paints, if you don't like this red all across the car, there is one paint color that you can get the rid of the red with. And that's, of course, the red paint. But either way, I think it looks fantastic. They've got, they do the split. I'll wait. Done? Christ. <laughs> okay, he has to be done now. So I actually do like the way that Hyundai does the split headlight thing. They've got your uh, LED running light here, and then you've got your actual projectors down here. And then very similar to the Elantra, you've got your specific end grille pattern down here with some radiators and some diffusers and that sort of thing. And then all the way around to the side, again, you have the only uh, wheel option, which is perfectly fine because it looks good. It's a gunmetal kind of two-tone thing. It's wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires, and you again see your red end brake caliper peeking out from underneath. I do like the fact that on the end cars you get body color match and full gloss uh, trimming around your wheel arches. Around the side, it's a lot less geometric than you would get in something like the Elantra N. You do have the red down on your side skirt along with an N stamped into the side, but you can really see from the side here that it is a shorter wheelbase vehicle, which makes it, of course, feel a little bit more darty, a little bit more agile on the road, but it does lack a little bit of that refinement that you get in the Elantra N, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get on the inside. But around the back, again, they do the split taillight thing, which it's not my favorite thing, but the, the tail is interesting looking, I'll say that. Uh, you have a spoiler at the top with your triangle LED taillight, which is very Veloster N, and it's arguably very Formula One, which is very cool. You've got your red uh, accenting down by your diffuser. You have a very, very big diffuser. And again, you have your dual uh, exhaust, and you've got your performance exhaust with all the crackles and the pops that that guy over at the autocross was just doing. But with that, step inside. All right, then inside the Kona N. I mean, this interior won't fool you into thinking it's a Mercedes, but it's 35 grand, so it really shouldn't. The design is fitting of the personality. It's simple, you've got black everywhere, uh, but you do have blue stitching and you have some subtle end details all over the place. You've got a completely digital gauge cluster, 10 and a quarter inches. Uh, you've got a big 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen. It's touch, it's Hyundai's newest system, it's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wired. Uh, you get your performance readouts if you're on the track. You can adjust your suspension and everything on, uh, on that performance screen. Uh, under the screen, you have hard buttons for your climate controls, which is fantastic. Beneath that, you have some storage and some USB, some wireless chargers and that sort of thing. 
Uh, and then you have your shifter. Of course, this controls your eight-speed wet DCT. Uh, it's nice. You've got your drive modes right next to it, heated seats, traction off. And then the steering wheel itself. It's a nice steering wheel. It doesn't have a flat bottom, but it's got N uh, buttons here. You've got a nice red NGS button here on the steering wheel underneath your N buttons. So you can customize your N modes, one for you, one for your partner, whatever it may be. It's a nice steering wheel. The paddles fall nicely to hand. Uh, it's nice and engaging and responsive in that way. Uh, and then in terms of seats, they're comfy, they're bolstered, they don't light up, um, but they're kind of like an Alcantara suede kind of fabric and they are manual. Interestingly enough, you do not get a sunroof in this thing. Um, that's just, just not an option. Rear seats, they are less spacious than the Elantra, uh, which is a little bit interesting. And there's not really many toys back there. And the fact that the interior is all black does make it seem uh, pretty small in the back seat. So. Of course, if you fold the seats down, then you have bigger cargo area because that's really the point of this thing. If the seats are up, you still have five cubic feet more than you would in the Elantra N. But when you fold those seats down and you don't have that scaffolding blocking, that's when you really start to get the benefit of this thing. But with that, let's get into the final thoughts. So, the Kona N. I know we spent a lot of time comparing this to the Elantra N, and that's largely because we drove them back to back this week. But the Kona N is still a fun and affordable car. It's got a quick and raucous engine. It's got a great gearbox. It puts power down well. The suspension is a little firm. The interior is simple and well-equipped, and it's the most utilitarian of the three N siblings. If you need to carry stuff around and still want to have fun, the Kona N is a great fit. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.